العاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين أشهد أن لا 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 شريك لا أشهد أن محمد عبد الرسول الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله ثم الحمد لله for this beautiful gathering and for the Sheikh that we wanted for a long time to be able to come out so we could benefit from him may Allah bless him and bless his family and bless all of you guys who are coming and this is by the tawfiq of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala before we start inshallah ta'ala we're gonna start with the speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the Quran and we're gonna call up brother Munib who's a student here at Iqra Learning Center and has memorized up to alhamdulillah ta'ala in Surah A'raf which means how many surahs does he have left to finish the Quran who can help me ya Hufad let's count one by one Seven. Baqarah Al Umran Misa Ma'idah five surahs to finish inshallah ta'ala so may Allah make it easy for him and bless him brother Munib he can come up بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألف لام صاد كتاب أنزل إليك فلا يكون في صدرك حرج منه لتنذر به لتنذر به وذكرى للمؤمنين اتبعوا ما أنزل إليكم ولا تتبعوا من دونه أولياء قليلا ما تذكرون وكم من قرية أهلكناها فجاءها بأسنا ذيات أو هم قائلون فما كان دعواهم إذ جاءهم بأسنا إلا أن قالوا إلا أن قالوا إنا كنا ظالمين فلنسألن الذين أرسل إليهم ولنسألن المرسلين فلنقصن عليهم بعلم وما كنا غائبين والوزن يومئذ الحق فمن ثقلت موازينه فأولئك هم المفلحون ومن خفت موازينه فأولئك الذين خسروا أنفسهم فأولئك الذين خسروا أنفسهم بما كانوا بآياتنا يقلبون ولقد مكناكم في الأرض وجعلنا لكم فيها معايش قليلا ما تشكرون the social media, I've been asked to speak about this topic a few times, a few times, a few lectures we've done on a topic with regards to social media, its benefit, its harm, its reality, its ruling, its importance, etc. in our modern age. But before we get started with the social media talk, we would like to be the night Tyler, just give a few for what? With regards to the marriage and the nikah that took place earlier today. The walima, the marriage, and the speech that was supposed to be given according to what we thought and what nothing that didn't happen was supposed to be. That's first and foremost. We say this all the time. We have to be mindful of what we said. It was supposed to be, it was supposed to be. There's no such thing as supposed. Supposed doesn't exist in the fact of Qadr. If it was supposed to be, then it would have happened. What we wanted, what we desired, what we planned, how we thought, but there is no, in reality, supposed. Because supposed is waqa, it actually happens. If you think about it, we say this all of the time. 
You're supposed to be here at 9 o'clock. You're supposed to order this. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed to be this. You're supposed to be here. There is no supposed. It is what Allah wills and what takes place. So um, what we had wanted and desired, I want to give a few points of reflection with regards to marriage and marriage today. All of this will be done after uh, our brothers. We have uh, Imam Mahmoud among us. We have um, Ustad Abu Anas Abdul Bari among us. And perhaps other brothers whose names that I don't know. They are more than welcome to come to speak to give any type of benefit that they would like to give. Platform is open. Inshallah Ta'ala, they're both older than me. If they want to give any type of fawaid or dhikr or tadkira, they be the night Ta'ala. I'm not a ball hog, Inshallah. You got to pass in the league. Huh? Inshallah. So those two brothers, alhamdulillah, they both know that there's no, uh, there's no mojamala. As we say in Saudi, there is no, huh? There is no kissing up or buttering up or being fake. It's a reality. They both know this. We've sat and spoken together before and benefited. So if they want to speak, inshallah ta'ala, then what? Marhaban bihima. They're more than welcome. And if they don't wish to speak, and that's fine as well. But for them to know that is what? Yani bit tarheeb, inshallah ta'ala. We mean that, huh? Bidna ta'ala. Khayr, inshallah. So, with regards to the marriage, then we gotta understand is that Islam is an extremely practical religion. It's a pragmatic religion. Many of us, many people, they try to make the religion to something, you know, mystic or mystical. <clears throat> they try to make the religion to something which is just a, a tale or a story. Something that is beyond the daily reach, the daily clutch, and the daily grasp of the adherence of the religion. And this, without any question, it leads us to a great deal of error and misguidance. Or, there are those from among us who try to marginalize Islam, or put it in a place or a time, put it in a mindset, put it in a mood. They try to put it in an error. And this is how it was, and this was, but now it's not like that anymore, okay? And there are many authentic hadith of the Messenger of Allah which show us the practicality of the religion. That's point number one. Point number two, when it comes to the worldly life, the Hayat dunya which we read is cursed, its name itself is dunya, lower, inferior, and adna, it's base. Dunya is base. We know these words, these uh, the meanings of these words, we know these ayats, we know these hadith, but at the same time, there are many authentic statements of the Messenger of Allah that speak about worldly things, worldly gain, worldly loss, worldly danger, and bringing consciousness to the Muslim of this hayatul dunya that leads to the benefit, the success, the salvation of the Akhirah. And that is exactly consistent with social media. They go hand in hand. So the Hayat al Dunya is cursed. The Hayat al Dunya is forsaken. The Hayat al Dunya is for the non Muslims, they have the upper hand. Right? The Hayat al Dunya is a place of test, of fitna. Our forefather, forefather Adam was sent out of Jannah to this earth, to this place, etc. We know this. But at the same time, the Prophet ﷺ, he teaches us, and he shows us, and he explains to us, is that there are many worldly things from the Hayatul Dunya that are essential for establishing the Akhirah. And that goes hand in hand when we talk about a tawasul al ijtimai social media. And there are many negative views about social media, looking down upon social media, Social media is this, Facebook is that, Twitter is that, Instagram, so on and so on and so forth. But we don't realize that oftentimes those worldly things are immediately recyclable. They're transferred, they're translated into the Akhirah, but in the right, proper manner. And from that is the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ that we spoke about yesterday, last night, yesterday for the Jumu'ah, in which the Prophet supplicated to Allah, and he would say, Allahumma, inni a'udhu bika min al -jur. فَإِنْهُ بِسُطَّجِيَةٍ وَعُوذُ بِكَ مِنَ الْخِيَانَةِ 
فإن هذا بئس البطانة. The authentic hadith collected by أصحاب السنن بسند جيد إن شاء الله. Narrated Abu Huraira, the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه Allah's refuge from hunger. He sought Allah's refuge from starvation. He sought Allah's refuge from famine. He asked Allah to protect him from having his stomach empty. Allah keep me from being hungry and having my stomach empty and void. فَإِنَّهُ بِئْسَ الْضَجِيرِ And that's because one of the worst things to suffer from and to struggle with and one of the worst pains and pangs to be affected by at night is hunger. And I seek your refuge from khiyana, from breaking my trust, breaking my amana, because فَإِنَّهَا بِئْسَ الْبِطَانَ It's an evil, inner, hidden, or concealed thing. We have the shi'ab, and then we have the ditha. The shi'ab and the ditha. Underclothes versus our clothes. The bitana, that which is batin versus that which is vahir. And there are many things that we conceal and hide from people. Sins, flaws, mistakes, errors, shortcomings. But the worst thing to have inside of you and behind closed doors is treachery. And the Prophet he sought Allah's refuge from hunger, from famine, from starvation, as the scholars of Islam say, and that's because they say what? The wisdom behind the hadith is that not being fed properly, not being fed well, prevents you from establishing your religious obligations. And it prevents you from being a good Muslim. Prayer without food, fasting without food, hajj without food, a jihad without food, doing your obligations as a husband, as a wife without food. Food is a necessary staple component of life, of the battle and of the struggle within and, with, and outside as well. And this was said by one of the greatest military strategists, and one of the most successful generals. He made this statement by saying, an army marches on its stomach. An army marches on its stomach. How big your army is, how big your cannons are, how much cavalry you have, how much of a tactician you are, that means nothing in light of the logistics supply of the army. Because an army marches on its stomach. No food, no fight. No water, no fight. No food, there is no energy. You can't conquer, you can't win anything unless you have the stomach. Think about that statement now. An army marches on its stomach. And the Prophet saw Allah's refuge and protection from hunger. The scholars of Islam, they explain this hadith to me because it prevents the person from ibadah. You cannot perform the ibadah properly if you don't have the necessary energy that the human body needs. Benefit number two from this hadith, and why I'm bringing it up now, pertaining to marriage and pertaining to social media, is that they say this hadith shows us the practicality of Islam. And that is because hunger, food, eating, and drinking is something what? Spiritual or worldly? Which of the two? Which of the two is it? Without a question. It's worldly. It's worldly. And that's why many Muslims have a misconception with regards to eating. You cannot eat third for food, third for air, third for drink, starve. There are many Muslims who use starvation as ibadah. And some of the shurah, some of the explainers and commentators of the hadith, they say, وَقَدْ يُسْتَدَلُّ بِالْحَدِيثِ عَلَىٰ أَنْهُ لَا ثَوَابَ فِي إِشْ الْجُوعِ الْمُجَرَّدِ قَالَ الشَّارِعِ he says this hadith is used to show that sheer hunger has no reward in it. There's no reward in just being hungry. There's a reward in being hungry for the cause of Allah. There's a reward in being hungry when you're fasting. There's a reward in being hungry when you give your brother the food instead of yourself. There's a reward in you avoiding the haram. Say, I won't take the money, the bribe, and I'd rather be, be, be patient upon hunger. As far as plain hunger, refusing to eat, then that isn't virtuous. So eating is a worldly thing. And when it's done with the proper intention, with the proper niya, it can become a spiritual act of worship. And if you don't eat it with the proper intention, then the hunger prevents you from ibadah, and the akhirah cannot be fulfilled, cannot be done, cannot be executed, the deeds of the akhirah, without the deeds of the dunya. Everyone understand this? The deeds of the dunya lead to the deeds of the akhirah. So that shows you the practicality of the deen. And from that is getting married. And from that is the concept of social media. There are certain things that you must do, you have to do on social media, which lead to Allah's good pleasure in the hereafter. So if you're blind from this reality, 
or you're too close-minded, or you can't see, and social media is just evil, haram, or marriage is a bad thing, or just a cultural thing, or something that my parents want me to do, then obviously you're gonna lose out on much of the good of the hereafter. So the Prophet asked Allah to protect him from being hungry, even though hunger is worldly, and that's because hunger prevents spirituality. Hunger prevents spirituality. Everyone understand this? It doesn't mean that your belly has to be full to the brim. It doesn't mean that you have to eat the most luxurious, fine things. But you don't have the necessary energy, minerals, and nutrients. You cannot think straight, let alone behave straight and correctly. So the dunya is translated and leads to the hereafter. That is the proper understanding of the Quran and the Sunnah. This world is a bridge to the hereafter. And you cannot ignore and neglect the bridge. I say that the bridge is absolutely cursed. It's all evil, it's all bad. I'm not even gonna walk across that bridge. And that's because we're living in this worldly life. And Allah Azawajal, as Ibn Rajab Rahim Allah explained, He created the dunya for His believing servants. So the worldly life is not cursed. Lidatiha, as He said. The world, the earth, whether you say it's round or flat, the universe, the galaxy, it's not just cursed just because it's cursed. It's not cursed just because it's for what it is. But it's only cursed because of what the people do in it and what they turn it into and how they fight and how they scratch and connive and cheat and steal and rob and plunder and murder each other for the hayat of dunya and its material gain. But the earth itself, the world itself, Allah made it. Allah created it. And He made it for His believing servants. So there are many things. Many misconceptions that have become spread in the Muslim world, they have to be revamped. We have to rethink certain things. And from that, is hunger is in the cause of Allah. Pure hunger. From that, the less food that you have, the better of a Muslim you'll be. From that, the less money that you have, the more pious you'll be. From that, the less social media, I have no social media apps, I'm never on social media, I never deal with social media, social media is evil, shaitan can also trick you like that. And many brothers, they say things like this, they talk about conferences, oh, we don't need no conferences, we need classes, we need lessons. Lessons are needed, so are conferences. Social media is not necessarily an evil thing. What you do on it, how you deal with it, that's a different story. Everybody understand this concept here? So that's, that's introduction number one. Introduction number two, the scholars of Islam, they say, is that from the virtues of marriage, why it's such a good thing to get married, and a virtuous thing, and according to some scholars, in certain times, obligatory to get married, is that There are several various diverse acts of worship that are included in marriage, all at once. And we know as Muslims, our purpose on this earth, in this hayat dunya is to worship Allah. Illa liya'budun. Allah says they, they're not in existence. They're not breathing and eating and sleeping. I didn't make them for nothing except to worship me. That's what Allah tells in the Quran. So our purpose in this world is to worship Allah Azza wa So anytime we have the ability to kill two birds with one stone, three birds with one stone, a flock of birds with one slingshot, we have the ability to economize and to maximize with regards to making four acts of ibadah in one act, four hasanat, four good deeds in one type of sadaqah, smart, wise Muslim is going to do so. And also from the practicality of Islam is that the rulings of, this, of Islam, the Kitab and the Sunnah and the Sharia, they don't wish to take the Muslim outside of his environment and take the Muslim outside of his time and his place and his error. And you'll find many Quranic ayat, rather Quranic surahs that were sent down, that were revealed, that were given to the Prophet ﷺ for specific incidences, specific happenings. قَدْ سَمِعَ اللَّهُ قَوْلَ الَّتِي تُجَادِلُكَ فِي We know the Prophet ﷺ, the woman came to him complaining about her husband. Her, my husband said this to me. My husband mistreated me like that, so on and so on and so forth. And Allah sent down an entire surah speaking about that one specific incident. And to this day, we still recite that surah. And that's because it was a social issue with the Arabs of 7th century, 6th century, 5th century Arabia. And we're in 2020 in the United States, but we still recite the same Quran. And that's because Allah sent the Quran upon a people, 
and he did not want for those people to be alienated from their culture and from their time and from their place and the things that were around them, things that were happening around them in their society. Are we understand this or not? Islam is practical. It's a practical religion. It's a real religion. It's a tangible religion. And it's not supposed to take you away from your time and your place and your culture, but it's supposed to make you more in tune with it. It's supposed to make you more active and more interactive with the things that are around you. And from that is sports. And from that is football and the Super Bowl. The Super Bowl is the most publicized sporting event on national television. NBA Finals, the U.S. Open, the uh, Yanni, the, 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 the Stanley Cup, okay? World Series, the Olympics, winter, summer, all of those things, sports that people play, none of them make as much money as the Super Bowl. Even though football isn't considered to be America's favorite pastime, the Super Bowl is the most popular sport. So tomorrow we have two teams facing each other, and many Muslims are going to watch that game and enjoy that game. They're going to eat things, they're going to drink, drink things, hopefully halal, inshallah, and they're going to enjoy that game. That's the reality or not, right? You have a team that you're better than one, not gambling, but the 49ers are going to win. No, the Chiefs are going to win. Fulan is going to get a ring. Fulan is going to get a chip. Fulan is going to win. It's a reality. Even brothers who are basketball fans, good basketball players, they're still interested in the what? In the NFL. So, when it comes to that game, and one day it was a statement made by a legend, a legendary quarterback. I won't mention his name. Legendary quarterback. It's Ijma, consensus that he was one of the greatest, if not the greatest quarterbacks to ever play the game. And he was asked about a modern day contemporary quarterback, whose name I won't mention, who people are comparing him to the greats and saying that he's on their status, rather he has surpassed them in statistics, in talent, in ability, and most importantly in what? Rings. Right? So they said, what do you think about such and such as a quarterback? He said, there's no doubt he's a great quarterback. Anyone who says other than that will be a fool. Like him, love him, but to say that he's not a great quarterback, you're not watching him play. So they didn't ask him, well, what about the controversy and the scandal? They say that they cheat and that they film their opponents and they pay off the refs and they deflate the footballs and they do this and they do that and they do that. So this legendary quarterback, he humbly smiled. He humbly smiled. He didn't frown. He didn't laugh as if he was shy or embarrassed, as if he didn't want to be put on a spot. He humbly smiled and he made a profound statement. He said, well, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. He says, if you're not cheating, you're not trying. That's what he said. If you're not doing some type of trick or some type of advantage, then you're not actually what? You're not trying to win. And every player, coach, wide receiver, tight end has some type of trick on one level or another. A little bit, a lot. Stick them, sandpaper with the ball, the plays, reading the coach's mouth, one way or another. He said, if you're not cheating, you're not what? You're not trying. If you ain't cheating, you ain't trying. So what does that mean? And why am I mentioning this right now? And that's because if you're not trying to maximize your ibadah, and you're not trying to knock out things more than once at one time. If you're not trying to cheat and get extra hasanat and extra ibadah by doing something worldly, such as eating or sleeping or drinking or getting married, then you're not what? You're not trying. You're not trying hard enough if you're not trying to steal six acts of worship and one act of ibadah. And from that is marriage. From that is getting married. Scholars of Islam, they say marriage entails many ibadat. From those ibadat, number one, is اِعْتِمَارُ أَمْرِ اللَّهِ وَأَمْرِ رَسُولِهِ صلى الله عليه وسلم. Is that you're, you're obeying Allah's commands. And you're obeying the commands of the Messenger of Allah عليه وسلم. وسلم. Thank you. Allah says, marry the women that are pleasing to you. Thank you. And that's the fi'l amr. The Prophet says, فَلْيَتَزَوَّجْ We know there is Lam wal Amr. Whoever can get married from among the young men and young women should do so. So the first benefit of getting married is being obedient to Allah and His Rasul. And that's enough. We can close the book. We can walk away from the lecture. Obeying Allah and His Messenger is manifesting in getting married. Number two, Al-Infaqu fi sabilillah is spinning in the cause of Allah, the Mighty and the Most High. You can't spin 
how you're married when you're single. You can get into the masjid, you can pay zakah, you can pay for dawah, you can do this, you can do that, but it's not the same as having a wife and children. And that is why the Messenger of Allah mentioned that specifically. He says, you will never spend anything in Allah's cause. Seek in the face of Allah. Except that you will be rewarded. And what example did the Prophet mention? For the Mujahideen, for the Ulama, for the Quran. What example did he make of Nafaqa? He says, He says, even the morsels of food you place in your wife's mouth. Even the morsels of food, the pieces of bread that you feed your mouth, that is a nafaqa that is done seeking the face of Allah and you will receive the ajr. And the Messenger of Allah he never said any other type of infaq or nafaqa. Proving that spending on your wife is one of the best and most virtuous ways of using your money. So that's ibadah number two. Ibadah number three, from the virtuous deeds that are performed, the way of cheating. Getting married, you think it's only to please yourself, right? Or to fulfill your desires. But naturally, when you get married, you're what? You're, you're cheating. You're stealing other ibadat for free. Be the night taller. Ibadah number three is i'faf for nafs. Ihsan al nafs is protecting yourself and protecting your wife. Protecting yourself from the sexual desires that Allah Azza has placed in you naturally. It's not a bad thing or an embarrassing thing or a shameful thing. Allah put desire in man for women. He put desire in women for men, naturally. Zuyi and the nas. That's the first thing. Horses, gold, silver. He says, Zuyi and the nasi, hubbu shahawati min men, al khayl al musawama, al anam, harf, khala nisa. Lust for women. So that's natural. And when Lut alayhi salatu salam was mentioned in the Quran, he censured his people. He spoke to his people. He asked his people, what did he say? He says, you You go to men. And another ayah, shahwatan, out of lust. And he never blamed them for loving and having lust. But he only blamed them for loving and having lust of what? Of men. Proving that sexual lust is something that's what? It's natural. And it isn't a bad thing. It's a natural thing. So you have these desires. Allah put inside of you naturally. And it's not something that's very important, guys, teaching your sons and your daughters, your teenagers, your young children, sex education. It's, it's, it's a, it's, whether you don't talk about it, they don't want to hear about it. You have to teach your son that that's natural. There's nothing wrong with liking the opposite sex. It's natural. What you do with it, you follow it, you control it, that's a different story. But the actual impulse, the feeling is natural. So from the benefits of getting married, and from the acts of worship that you perform when you get married, is that you protect your chastity, you protect your private area, you protect your nafs. And Allah Azza wa He praises the believers, He lauds them, and He declares to us that they are successful. Rather, Allah said they have succeeded. They won. They won already. It's over. They are the winners. And from the characteristics of those successful believers is those Those protect their furuj. They don't, no one sees their private areas. Except for those who are allowed to. And obviously, metaphysically, no one is ever a means of them enjoying their sexual desires unless it is allowed to do so. Shaykh Abdul Rahman ibn Sa'di rahimahullah and others have explained from these ayats in the Quran is that when a person does not restrict himself to halal, he cheats, he sleeps around, he makes zina, adultery, fornication, he has infidelities, marriage uh, relations, he says, fulfill ghalid. In most cases, he doesn't protect his wife, and his wife will fall into haram as well. His wife will cheat on him, will sleep around, she will have an affair, and in most cases, it's his fault. And that's because the one who tastes the haram never suffices himself with the halal. And in most cases, you lose your desire for the halal. So when you have the haram, zina, it's no need to go to your wife. The haram is free. It's endless, it's limitless, there's no restrictions to it, there's no responsibilities, there's no string attached to fulfilling your sexual desires without marriage. Come for her what? Her sins and her errors as well. Everyone understand this? And there are many other acts of ibadah 
that are all felt and included in ha as zawaj. Last but not least, brothers and sisters, with regards to the social benefits of marriage and also spiritual, is that marriage forces you to be a better person. Marriage mandates upon you maturity, responsibility, patience, management, decision-making skills. And if you are left to yourself, to live by yourself, to do whatever you want with your money, to stay at home with your mom, to play basketball with your friends, to laugh, to joke, to sit around, you would never ever grow and develop and mature. The pressure, the hardship, the difficulty, the unforeseen problems that come from marriage, they don't hurt you and harm you, but they turn you into a better Muslim man. And we all know what that wise man said. He said that a diamond, things that people die for, they die for diamonds. People kill for diamonds. A diamond is extremely valuable. Diamonds are a girl's best friend, as they say. Best thing to buy a wife is a diamond ring, a diamond necklace. They love diamonds. People die for diamonds. Countries steal diamonds from other countries. The brothers that I'm talking to, your forefathers, your ancestors, I can point at you and you and you and you. And I can tell each and every one of you that your forefathers had diamonds stolen from their countries. Stolen, taken in a colonial age. And the diamonds are, as we speak, in display in the museum. And your uh, ancestral lineage fights for those diamonds. And they say, we're not giving you what? Anything back, it's our diamond. It was given to us by your leader when you were our colony. We benefit from it. People love diamonds. So this person, he said about a diamond, he says a diamond is nothing special. It's nothing special. It's nothing more than a hunk of coal, a chunk of coal that did pretty well under pressure. There's a chunk of coal that did pretty well what? Under pressure. It made out pretty what? Pretty well. It did okay when the pressure was applied to it and it became a diamond. So just think about you as a man or a woman. You think that marriage hurts you, it stresses you out, it takes your money, I don't want to get divorced. Marriage turns you into a better human being. And that's because you learn and you're forced to practice responsibility. You're forced to manage your money properly, your time properly, your energy. And the same applies to multiple marriages and polygamy. It doesn't weaken a man, but it makes you stronger. Because you now have to step up and rise to the occasion because there's more what? There's more pressure. And obviously the more pressure applied, the finer the what? The finer the diamond. Everyone understand says that's all a diamond is, is a chunk of coal. Look to the words he used, the expression. That did pretty well what? Under pressure. Just like sports. You choked in the Super Bowl. You choked in the finals. You choked in the playoffs. Versus you did what? You rose to the occasion. He's clutch. Fourth quarter. And a quarterback can't be a great quarterback until he has several fourth quarter comebacks. That's a fact. Several fourth quarter comebacks. In which he was down by 10, down by 20, down by 25, down by 23. And he led his team. He rallied a 90, 90 yard drive in the fourth quarter. And that makes a quarterback from good to great to what? Elite. Because you do well under what? Under pressure. So marriage doesn't hurt you. Even if you get divorced, it's supposed to make you better. It's supposed to make you realize and make you wiser and the list goes on. So be mindful, brothers and sisters, the young men and the young women, with regards to the virtue of marriage, the importance of marriage, the necessity of marriage, okay? The excellence of getting married. Don't look at it as a bad thing. And don't listen to naysayers. Oh, you're just gonna get divorced. She's gonna take your money. Oh, you're just gonna do this. You're gonna waste your years. You have a future in front of you. Don't listen to those people. Marriage, be in that time, is only gonna bring about the good. If you look at it that way. If you look at where a diamond comes from, that's what it is. But if you think that a diamond is always shining and it's brilliant, then of course, you may be harmed through marriage. You may be harmed through divorce because you don't have the proper perception. You have sight, but you have weak what? Weak perception. Sight is weak, and perception is what? Is strong. Khayr inshallah. So, with regards to social media, is social media a good thing or a bad thing? What's the most popular social media platform or outlet today? I want to hear from you guys. Instagram. First thing you think about when you think about social media is what? Instagram. 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 Play it. After Instagram is what? Twitter. 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 After Twitter? Facebook. 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 Huh? Right? What's after Facebook? 
Snapchat. Snapchat. YouTube. YouTube. Good. What else? TikTok. 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 It's new. Thank you. What else? Anything else? Huh? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Thank you. Any other platforms? MySpace. Well, I haven't heard that from you. Thank you. What else? What's that? What's that? What's that? What's that? Good. Who said that? Uh, very good. It's a very important answer. Because many people, they look down on other apps and they don't think they're in social media. WhatsApp, we just had a debate before we did the, the, the lecture. WhatsApp is considered to be what? Social media. Whether it's linked to another outlet or not, but it is social media. And it's important to look at it like that. What else is something that's very important, which is social media as well? Twitter. We said that already. Later. What else besides Twitter? How about YouTube? You said YouTube? Netflix. Fire. Netflix. Won't you? Sorry, what else? What else is, uh, uh, that's all on social media? Snapchat. You said Snapchat. Hulu. Hulu. Yeah, Instagram. Fire. Hulu. MashaAllah. What else? Some brothers are sleeping now right now. MashaAllah. May Allah bless their sleep. I mean. May Allah give the brothers, may Allah give the believers what? Rest. Hello, my name. Email. Email. Can't beat that, right? That's right there in front of you, right? Gmail. This that's social media. Messenger. Messenger. That's up there with MySpace, right? Back in the day, right? Tight. Hey, So you guys get the point. All right. So guys, how much time does the average person spend on social media today? Twenty minutes. Twenty minutes? <laughs> One hour? Only sixty minutes? Three hours. Four. Seven hours. Seven hours. What's the average person? Seven, seven hours. Like seven. A whole day. How many hours out of uh, how many hours in a day? So what's the what's the breakdown of seven out of twenty-four? A little over twenty-five percent. That's almost a quarter of a person's day on what? On social media. All right. Right. What's the worst thing you can do on social media? Jackson. Say bad things. Say bad things. Stuff worse than that. What's the worst thing you can do on social media? Let me see what you guys do. Backbite. Fight. What else? Expose yourself. Fight. Anybody else? Look at the opposite gender. Look at the opposite gender. Stuff worse than that. In 2020. Huh? Fuck that, Message other strangers. Message other strangers. Fight. You, Akhi, the young one. Put your address. Put your address. <laughs> what about you, Akhi, the little guy? You. Hamza. 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 I say bad things about people and write their pictures. That's it? These are all okay answers, but they're very far. The worst thing that you can do on social media is apostasy, apostasize, or apostasy, apostasy from the stand. Where are you guys at from that? Nobody mentioned that. Zina, someone bringing it to your house, someone having your credit card information, this, that. The worst thing that can possibly happen is shit. It's kufa. Do people who call to apostasy and atheism use social media? Yeah. Can you not go in there and find the mistakes of the Quran, the atrocities, war crimes of Muhammad? Can you not find that? The Quran is grammatically backwards. Islam is against women. You find all of that. So that's the first thing that we should have said, guys. That was Abraham's fear. Protect me and my progeny from worshiping idols. That was the greatest fear. In the shirk al Huh? Who will you worship after me? Allah said about Yaqub. Ma ta'buduna min ba'di. So that's the greatest harm. So the worst thing that can happen on social media as a person can lose his religion totally, why the yellow be left? And that is in Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, you'll find it there. What else? Number two, after you after using your religion 100%, what else can happen? That's the worst thing after that. Number two. Yeah. Um, act, act like a Christian, but you're a Muslim. Allah Akbar. To act like a Christian, even though you're really a Muslim. In other words, for your religion to be severely weakened, battered, and beat it down. A beat down. It's not dead, it's not flatline. You still believe, but your actions are like people 
whom you're not supposed to be like. So there's something else though. Other things too. Bid'ah. Good answer. You can practice innovations. People who call to innovations. And they look down upon the sunnah and the books of the sunnah. Are they not on social media as well? Do they not have doubts? Do not say things about people trying to practice the sunnah? You're Wahhabis. You don't love the awliya. You're your ibadah, your spirituality is bad, and it's boring. There's no softening of the heart, there's no dhikr, there's no zuhud. You find all of that. What else can happen to you on social media after that? After shirk and kufr and bidah? To dwell on other people's possessions. To dwell on other people's possessions or mistakes, like something else before that. The advocate to destroy Islam. An advocate to destroy Islam is pretty much like. The first class, an apostate, why you ever do that? What else? There's something else. Spreading mistruths about Allah. Spreading? Mistruths. Mistruths. mistruths about Allah. Ignorance, okay, that can fall into innovation. That can fall into leaving Islam as well. But it could be other things as well. Something else before that though. Major, major sins. Major sins in general, for sure. Major sins, no doubt about that. But it's something specific I'm looking for. Spread rules. Making halal haram. Making halal haram kufr. That's kufr. How about after shirk akbar, kufr akbar, after bid'ah, you can become a person who is a worshiper of the worldly life, of the hayat al dunya. Just, that's pretty bad as well. And with your heart is attached to this world, total attachment. What else can happen on social media? Of bad, negative things. We mentioned everything pretty much. We said the major sins. Minor sins, backbiting is a major sin. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he says about telling, uh, carrying tales, لَا يَدْخُلُ الْجَنَّةَ قَتَّتْ And the man will not enter paradise. How much gossip is on what? Social media. All right, tell you, what are the good things you can do on social media? What's the best thing you can do on social media? The no. best thing, the greatest thing. To call to Allah. To call to Allah. What else can you do? The greatest thing that can happen to you on social media. Bring people to Islam. Hala Not call them to Islam? But to actually have someone say, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh. Right? Someone become a Muslim through your page, through your video, through your post, or whatever. Very good answer. What else? After that, what else can happen? Share lectures. Share lectures. Okay, what happens when you share a lecture though? What's so special about sharing a lecture? Beneficial. You gotta finally tune in a little bit. Something else I want. Spread knowledge, something else. Some a Muslim who believes in Allah, right? the basics of Tawheed, now becomes guided. They leave off innovations to practice Sunnah. They leave off the cultural Islam to practice the correct Orthodox Islam. <coughs> they leave off the dunya and attachment to it and loving it and worshiping it and following it to practicing the proper Islamic zuh, the proper sense towards dunya. Perfect. Then you can teach someone who is ignorant. Correct? People who do have the correct creed, who are Muslims, who do practice the sunnah, they need to be reminded. They need to be reminded, polished every now and then. Or, worse come to worse, tell the kid. You just remind someone and give someone a benefit. Type, what else can you do on social media that's very good? Not pertaining to the religion anymore. Worldly stuff. Watch highlights. Watch highlights. Hello, right? Let's keep it real. Watching highlights. Some may say, that's haram, brother, that's bad, brother, so on and so forth. But how many other bad things could you be doing at the time when you're watching what? Highlights. You're watching sports highlights. How old are you? 16. Another 16-year-old is watching some other type of what? Highlights. This is reality. This is real. This is good. This is good. You have to be mindful of that. I'm watching sports highlights versus some other type of things which are highlights. And of course, those highlights will become downlights. Once that high wears off, it drops you all the way to the bottom. All the way to the bottom. Why the other bit left? You plummet all the way to the end. That's the reality of social media. Tell you, what else can you do on social media that's positive, even if it isn't religious? Al Amru bil Ma'roof wa Nahi an al Munkar. That's from the Min Azm al Umur, like in Adad Dini. Hada Yatalak al Deen. بالشريعة نريد شيء يعني دنيوي مباح مفيد يعني في الدنيا something that's beneficial in this world that's not necessarily attached to the religion such as what? 
Knowledge. Gain knowledge of what? Health. Health. There you go. Health. Nice, huh? Health disciple. Dying. Getting your, your, your rip right. Tight. What else? I don't know if that's, if that's halal. Huh? <laughs> uh, that may be that cool. Uh, the muscles, huh? The washboard. <laughs> I'm all out of line here. <laughs> you may have to reinvestigate that. Huh? <laughs> I'm going to have to free myself, what? <laughs> From you. And so when I met him, he said, Mufti, I want to do a video on working out. That's it. I didn't know he was going to practice, what? Innovations later on. I'm free from him. It's not on? Huh? That's how you got to do it, right? Tell you? What else can you do? He said, health. Learning about health on social media. What else? Is it okay to watch the Super Bowl? To watch the Super Bowl. We're going to get there. We're going to get to that, inshallah. You want to get there. What else can you do beneficial, worldly benefit? Looking, looking for ways to make more money. Okay, he says, looking for ways to make more money. I'm not here searching for a lecture, for a khutbah. I don't want to see people making a hajj and tawaf. I'm looking to make dunya, halal money. That's a good answer. I'm trying to say that before you watch the game, there's a bad event to start before the games. Is it okay? <laughs> To watch the clear, clear. We're going to get there, inshallah. We're yeah. going to get to it. We're going to talk about Super Bowl, inshallah. What else? Uh, to show good character. To show good character. Uh, more religious, if anything. Mm -hmm. Promote your business. Promote your business. To make money. To make your business it has nothing to do with Muslims. I'm not selling Muslim products. It's their products. I'm selling things worldly. So what else can we do? Getting married. Uh, stay connected with the brothers. Religious. Stay connected with the brothers is religious. I found lost family members. I found lost family members. That's religious. Job opening. A job opening. Dunya. Seeking money. What else can we do? Watching funny things. Watching funny things. Entertainment. Comedy. Is it the most beneficial thing? Is it the best thing to do? But some people may find this funny instead of finding something else funny. Alright guys, so where did I go wrong? Where did I go wrong? Who can point out my mistakes in my lecture, the errors that I just made? What did I say that was incorrect? No one picked up on my mistake? On my flaw? Seeking money, learning about health, finding lost family members, so on and so on and so forth. All of these things in reality are what? All of these things are what? Huh? Can't hear you guys. Dunya matters. They're translated into the. Can't hear you guys. You guys are unsure. You're uncertain. Those things in reality can be translated into what? Nakhira. Okay. Hajj without money. Possible, impossible. Sadaqa. Zakat. Talibul Idni. Dawah, etc. Without money is what? Impossible. Are we understanding this? Hajj and you're sick. Possible? You can't get out of the hospital, but possible or not? Umrah, in, possible or not, without proper health. And doing the good, forbidden the evil. No muscles, no strength. You don't have the, the... So in actuality, all of these worldly things can be translated into what? Like I just explained to you. Hunger prevents you from the spiritual practices. Everyone understand? That's why they call it recreation. Because it recreates. It's recreation of energy. It's a damn it's a positive thing that you do for a limited period of time that allows you to do what? Spring back into the spiritual realm. And in a sense, it allows you to spring back into the what? The spiritual realm. As far as watching highlights just to watch them, watching the Super Bowl just to watch it, looking for lost family members just for that, making money just for making money, then at worst, it's going to be a waste of time. And you're not producing and doing things with your time that are better. Everyone understand this point or not? So therefore, we have to look at social media as a reality. Allah knows best. Is, is it going to go? Is it going to leave? It seems as if it's here to what? That's what it seems like. And Allah knows best. That's what's obvious. So if it's a part of our daily lives, food, education, everything is on an app now, the smart Muslim and the wise Muslim is going to use it. And the Muslim is never going to be xenophobic. Anything from the outside, from the kuffar, from the modern age, it's new school, it's modern, it's high tech, I don't want it. That wasn't the stance of the Prophet In the battle of Khandaq, the trench, he learned a trick of war. Defensive warfare through who? 
amongst us. Right. Right. And he dug the trenches. We're not going to go out and fight you. We're not going to engage you on the battlefield. We're going to force you to come to us with these trenches, and then we will make a counter strike. What did the Arabs say? The Mushrikun. They said, what is this? This is an innovation. Muhammad has another trick up his sleeves. He made these trenches. This isn't our way. Our people, we stand in front of each other with swords, like, like valiant men. The Prophet said something, he did not reject the idea of who? Said man, even though the idea was what? Domestic or foreign? It was foreign, but he took it. And that's because it was wise and it was beneficial. So social media is not to be rejected. It's not something which you should, should me personally, Allah knows best, to say, well, I don't want my son to have a phone. I don't want my daughter to have a phone. No, you can't have your own fun. You can't have your own fun. Maybe that's good. Maybe that's okay at a point in time. But a point in time must come and what you have to realize for this teenager or this young child to have a phone is like them taking a drink of water in 2020. Social media has become like that in life. So embrace it, take the good out of it, look for the good in it, recreate your energy in it, try to avoid the harm in it, or you can neglect it, ignore it, act like it doesn't exist, and then later on be consumed and swallowed by that thing. I would understand this? So the rules with regards to leaving Islam, and the things that lead to a person leaving Islam, befriending non-Muslims. That's the foundation of the Aqidah of Tawheed of Ibrahim That's the Asr of my father is not a Muslim, I call him to Islam, I have nothing to do with you. That's the Asr, that's the message of Ibrahim So what do you do on social media that could possibly lead to you becoming a non-Muslim? Loving the Kufar, befriending them, making jokes with them, playing sports with them, so on and so forth. Watching their sports, possibly, one could say that. You love their way. Everyone understand this? Looking at them with admiration. Everybody understand this or not? No. Fahim, with regards to the bid'ah. And wow, a million people are at this lecture right now. <clears throat> this speaker is speaking, this talker is talking. He has to be upon the truth. Look how popular he is. Look what he has established, look what university has established. He has to be upon the truth, so let me follow him. And the next thing you know, the innovation subtly creeps up upon you. And even if you don't practice the innovation and the incorrect practices of Islam, you'll sympathize for them. And you'll start talking and saying, well, you know, this group, you know, this ikhtilaf among al sunnah this, this school and that school. You start talking like that. You start saying, you start validating the other theories of creed. There's the Athari school and then there's the Ash'ari school. And they're both accepted. You start talking like that. You sympathize for them. You start saying, well, it's okay to, to practice this, and this Imam said that. What's the Hassan of Hufunan? What's the Habba Hufunan? What's the Waka Hufunan? What's the Kala Bihi Jama'a Fulan? And you start sympathizing for the innovation and for the incorrect practices of sin. That's a danger and a harm of social media, sins, worldly life, dunya, houses, cars, jewelry. Men, women, this and that, that can happen to you on social media. And any other haram thing that took place in the time of the Prophet can also take place in time of what? Social media. From that is lying. And the Prophet I'm telling us about lies spreading. And how a servant, He'll make a statement without being clear on what that statement is and what it means. And it would take him to a fire that's greater than the east and the west. Think about one fatwa on social media, one hadith that you spread, one Muslim scholar that you spoke about, one Muslim student of knowledge that you speak about, that you talk about, one issue, it's halal, it's haram, it's okay, and a thousand people watch it in two seconds, a million people retweet it. You lied upon Allah and His Messenger and you don't even realize. So the halal and the haram doesn't change, it's all the same. Shit, kufr, bid'ah, love of the dunya, sins, showing off, Seeking fame, all of those things are all applicable to social media. But it's faster, it's quicker, it's instant. You can press a button, whereas 10 years ago, 20 years ago, 100 years ago, you had to leave your house to go get it. You had to go to a place to enjoy it. You had to spend your tangible, physical money, whereas you can be under your covers. It's four of us in a hotel room on a dower trip. You're going to sleep, you're making your F-carb, you're talking to your wife, and I'm on my phone, Reading, listening, watching to Allah knows. And you don't even what? You don't even know it. 
I can make any purchase with a swipe of a thumb. Click, right, the button, right? Face recognition, and I can purchase anything. So it's faster, it's quicker, it's more accessible. So you have to have more precaution. More precaution. Haram can now come to you. Whereas before you had to go out and seek it and search it and hide and cheat it and sneak it in or get an older person to buy it for you. Can't you go buy me this drink? Can't you go buy me this magazine? It's not like that now. And don't ever think that the shaitan is not going to use social media to deceive us and to trick us. And that's because he is an enemy. And all warfare is based off of deception. In al harba khada. War is deception. And Allah tells us about Iblis that the shaitan and the shaitan and the adu'un fatakhidu ish waliya karina. Allah says he to you is an enemy, so take him as a. Now, what does this verse mean? I'm going to include the lecture with this. What does that verse mean? He is an enemy, so take him as an enemy. What does that mean, Islam? Well, is that not redundant? Fulan is your enemy, so take him as an enemy. What does that mean? Be precautious. But you know that already because he's your enemy. And he's emphasizing. It's emphasizing. What else? There's something else deeper than that, though. Let your actions and statements reflect that. Let your yeah. actions reflect that you have that mentality that you're at war. And not just with your tongue. That's a good answer. It's something else, too. It's something else as well. Fight back. Fight back. No, you don't always fight back. Sometimes you can't fight your enemy. Your enemy will be too strong. Sometimes you gotta retreat. Sometimes you gotta run. Sometimes you gotta hide. Sometimes you have to resort to politics. All right? Then I have the ability to fight on the battlefield. It's deeper than that. It's not haram. It's okay to do. Uh, in general, but it's something else that I want. Understand your enemy. Understand your enemy. Is that don't think that the only way of attacking someone is physical. Don't think that. There are many ways of a person terrorizing you. It doesn't just have to be through physical harm. There's germ warfare, psychological warfare, economic warfare, i.e., don't think that the enemy that Allah has told you is your enemy is going to take a path and leave off a path. Himself. To tell these fanatical people to what? Stop, the war is over, it's lost. It's no point in you losing your life and taking the lives of our soldiers. And if they would have killed the emperor, then the fanatics would have kept what? Fighting even more. So the concept of they were at war, they were enemies. And one country says that there is no avenue that's gonna be abandoned and ignored. And we're gonna make as much harm as possible to get the fight into what? Stop, and that is shaitan on social media. That's shaitan on social media. So you have to have all of your avenues checked. And the moment that you let your guard down, you think you're doing all right, I'm good, I'm here, I'm responding around, we're breaking up, he says what? We're taking some what? That's why they take that, because you're fighting this person. So this is very important to understand, is that the shaitan will allow you to live peacefully in certain things, but he will attack you and get you from things that you don't realize. So if you're on social media, let it be responsibly. If you're on social media, let it be with a purpose and a goal. If you're on social media, make sure that you're racking up hasanat. And make sure that you don't leave no free time for something which is just plain and basic, let alone dislike, let alone what? Haram. And when you do that, Bidinai Ta'ala, you take an advantage of social media. And it's not a cursing, but it is actually a what? A blessing. Allah, Azza He surely knows best. Please go back to the other lectures that we have done concerning social media, in which we discussed it from different aspects and different angles. We want to talk about it from a different way. Okay, we ask Allah to guide us all with regards to social media and to protect us all with regards to social media and to make our social media something which is beneficial for our deen and for our dunya. Allahumma ameen. Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you guys very much for your respect, for your time, for your attention. And uh, those brothers who we met tonight say, oh, it's a pleasure to meet you in person, to see you talk in person, so on and so forth. The pleasure is mine if you only but know. Just like you're happy to meet me, I'm happy to meet you and to see you in person. Thank you.